Good morning, this is totally random. Featuring Franz Baruna and Andrew Embler. Random, your somewhat frequent new show about Concrete 5. I'm Franz, this is Andy. Um, hello. Uh, it's November 16th, and uh, we've been on hiatus for a while. Um, diseases, vacations. <laughs> uh, absence makes the heart grow fun. I hope absence makes the heart grow fun. We're here, this is a very special Total Random. Not <laughs> only are we back, so. uh, but there's some exciting stuff that's going to happen in, in Howard View that we're going to open the doors to our creative process. Open the kimono, oh, I might say, if, if, you our, will. if our douche here. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you're going to see some cool stuff that uh, we would normally not bother you with until we were a lot closer to um, being done with it. But we figured, meh, why not? Uh, first off, jumping right into the news, uh, we won! Yay! Sweet! So we uh, have been asked... One for more than one, but they've announced uh, at least one of them. The uh, best open source CMS. Uh, and the peoples choose Concrete 5. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, uh, people. Thanks, peoples. That is great. Uh, give me something to jabber about next year. Uh, I'm sure it helps CMS Critic as well. And uh, it's, it's really nice to win. Yeah, absolutely. Great to be. Blackness, man. Okay. Um, what are you doing? The gaping. Are you okay? Board. Everything good? Um, yeah, it's a, you know, things are quirky. It's Tactical difficult. All right. Well, you can go to cmscritic.com, look in your editorial section, and you'll see a nice blog post about us. And I think that they're going to have rolling announcements is the vibe I'm getting. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, you know, that's the, that's the, the yeah, general vibe. like to keep the excitement going. Just draw it out as much as you can. More power <laughs> to you. Uh, so, yeah, they've announced a couple. And I think they're, last I saw, they announced a third. I think there's a couple more. And then they have their own critics' choice. And we'll all wait with a, a, a bated breath yeah. for, uh, for who, what the critic will choose as their favorite. Um, anyway, that was great. Uh, in other news, we've got this sweet thing in the mail. Awesome. Let's bring that up if we can. Technical difficulties. Boom! It looks like yeah. talk still. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, that is hanging up on our wall. Thank you, Bert Alton. That is made of steel. Even the hand. The, the hand, a plasma cut steel out of <coughs> diamond plate, and Super then a cool. big old C kind of circle y thing with a five coming out. Can knock on that when it's lunchtime and the, <laughs> the kids come running. Come on, come on chat time. Very cool. Thank you. Uh, deeply appreciated. That's and awesome. uh, what a guy putting that yeah. together, shipping it to us just for the love. Uh, you're okay. Uh, that's the news. I think that's all the news. I'm, I'm sure other things have happened. There's been some meetups that have happened. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, stuff going on. Uh, you can learn all about that in our exciting community at Concrete5.org. Uh, speaking of community and Concrete5.org, I think it's time for Karma. And the weekly Karma winners, come on down. So at Concrete5.org, we uh, have a really cool automated system that doles out karma points because we have gamified the experience of being in an open source project. And uh, What kind of game is it? It's just the most exciting <laughs> game you'll ever play. Yes. Uh, you can get points for promoting the project, you can get points for helping people, and you can get points for actually doing work, like submitting code or uploading stuff to the PRB and whatnot, the, uh, the, the marketplace review process. Uh, and every week we, we run a, a magical karma machine that picks the winners from each of these three categories and uh, gives them a free add-on from a big pool of add-ons that we maintain. So, uh, did the karma machine run? Let's see. I'm going to see if we can switch the screenshots here and not lose audio, but let, let's, let's find out. Can we talk? Yes, we're talking. Looks like it. Yes. Sweet. Weekly winners are... Shibuya. Yeah, okay, it ran. So Looks we like a C Cowper won a copy of the ad server. That's a great add on. Nice. We're doing help. Help. Uh, we got Host Co winning a copy of the uh, randomizer for promoting Concrete 5. Sweet. Used the and randomizer just the other day. We got Net Junkie 279 winning a copy of the dealer locator for doing work. Cool. Cool. I hope he has some dealers to locate. 
thank you guys. We appreciate all the help that everybody puts in, and uh, yeah, it's just really exciting to be be part of something that can uh, that can win people's choice yeah. and, uh, and, and have community people around doing it. things. It's, it's really cool. Uh, any karma pictures? We got a ton. Oh yeah! Let's look at some karma pictures. Yes. Ooh. Got a clipboard from Jay Moore. Right. Beating uh, all those birds. Right on top. This one came in from JTM71. I gotta wonder if that's a like clipboard meme going on here. Yeah. Another uh, sort of book here. Uh, we got Burger Bonds workspace right there. Nice. Boom, right there in the corner of the desk. Oh. That was a huge processor for a second, right? Yeah. Like, that's the biggest computer. I've ever <laughs> Lovely. Got a laptop and growth curve. Everybody will know what you're doing at the coffee shop. <laughs> And this would have been a little more, uh, a little more festive for a couple weeks ago, but we got this some awesome. That's excellent. Ooh, That's great. scary content management. That's some karma points right there. Yeah, we should, we should get some extra points for that bad boy. <laughs> the little saw. Very cool. <laughs> oh, what time is it? Concrete five time. That's right. <laughs> And then last but not least, we got some motivation goals. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Smack. Oh, good <laughs> stuff. Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. If you want stickers, so you can be uh, excited, featured in this exciting moment of Totally Random, all you have to do is ask. We'll happily send you stickers. Go to our marketplace, hit the swag drop down. Scroll past the beautiful t-shirts and the wonderful swag bag that includes screwdrivers and USB keys and get five stickers for free in the mail! Nice. All you gotta do is put your mailing address in there. Now when we say mailing address, we mean actual physical mailing address in the real world of human flesh and living people. There is some type of probably government run postal system in your country and we can send an envelope filled with stickers to it and they'll bring it to your door. For that to work, you're going to have to have an address. It has a number, has a street, probably some type of city, state, province, some type of location, a postal code, maybe a country, all that, some new lines. We get that, we put it on a label, we send it off, boom, works great. Can't send it to an email, can't send it to Joe. Thanks. <laughs> Woo! Excellent. How are we doing, man? We are blazing through this stuff. Is it time for the PRB? I think it might be. I think it is. Let's check in with Greg Joyce. Introducing... Great Choice by Greg Joyce. All right, that's good. Oh, Greg, you're not here. You've already made a great choice. Greg is on his honeymoon. You can see he's proudly married and having a good time. So, uh, we're gonna have to freestyle through this on our own. Yeah, you're a long time viewer. Yeah. You'll probably remember the days when we did the segment. Oh, like yes. Yeah. The dark truth <laughs> is that, uh, yeah, it's Concrete Five is no exposure to the add-ons. There's about a dozen people in the other room, and we've got some nice processes for approving these add-ons, and Andy and I and don't, don't have a clue. So, um, what do we got? Let's uh, scroll down <laughs> and see. Oh, oh boy. Yes. Okay. Well, let's do, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do the theme releases or something. Yeah, let's do yeah. the oh, Okay, right. cool. Uh, oh. oh, man. Oh. Getting, getting to it. It's been a while, too, hasn't it? When was the last time we did one of these shows? It was in 16. Oh, oh, my God. Maybe not. Maybe the 23rd. Well, October, though. you got to keep going down, I yeah. think, right? Repose. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't seem familiar. Maybe. I think we did repose. Yeah, it does feel yeah. familiar. All right, let's start with yeah. Vertigo. Well, that looks like a theme. Let's get some screenshots. Yeah, Formigo. Nice. Got some okay. columns. Yeah, some expanding nav. Free oh. stuff comes with it. Slider, containers, corrections. Social glasses, wow, so including some add-ons or something. That's cool. Pretty cool. Looks pretty nice. Formigo generally has good themes. Quality stuff. Cool. Thank you. Oh, I see who approved this one. Yeah, I think I know a little bit about this theme. Well, tell us all about it, Matt Waters. So this is from Brian Lewis. It's called Oliva, I believe. Um, and this has some nice textiles, kind of a gray theme Ooh, to it. And they, and that logo throb at me. It's got the uh, infamous Brian Lewis. <laughs> Brian Lewis nav, I love it. And nice. a bunch of cool stuff. It's like a weird combination of minimalism and chunky fonts. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. 
Sweet. Pumpkin. We got a pumpkin theme. Yes, it was just in time. We had been on our game. Ooh. Well, that'll that'll be hot in a year. Yeah. Definitely yeah. a spooky dark theme in the background. Nice, nice. Light lines. Ooh, nice. Wow, comes with an iPad and an iPhone. <laughs> Uh, this is from JB1. It's called Light Lines. I know uh, I haven't approved this, but I think I looked at it as well. So we can take a look at this. Oh, it's beautiful! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice and responsive theme. Yeah. yeah. Fully responsive. That's nice. It's got lots of layouts and an expert support. Yeah. Nice. I'd suggest you do yourself a favor and buy it now. <laughs> that looks great. Good. So back to this here. Too many windows going. Uh, we got a uh, responsive framework kind of theme. This is called Flex 1200 by Growth Curve. Oh. I'm not sure what you're going to get out of the demo here, but as you can see, it looks like a good starting point for making a theme. So if you're a theme developer and looking for a decent CSS framework to do your, your column reaction on, here's a nice one to start from. You take from. this one and you make it change. Fork away. Nice. Cool. Uh, and then lastly, we have the shadow <coughs> theme, also from, uh, this is from 55 Web Design. I believe this is uh, their first submission to the marketplace, and uh, we'll check this out real quick. <coughs> Oh. It's called Silver Shadow. Nice. And it has a. Oh, it's got a slider. Slider and some fonts and such. Cool. Little images. Nice. Yeah, little drop shadows and stuff. Pretty. Cool. So that's what we got for themes this week. Let's Excellent. See, let's see what's going on in the add on releases. Bear with me while I scroll back through the, uh, the days here. <laughs> Back in time. Do do do. Clean out that there we go. FOV player responsive. Gallery. Oh, we did. We did those. Yeah, those sound familiar. Cool. Yeah. Pink spoon marketing. That does not. That's All new right. to me. So this was approved by Greg Joyce, and uh, looks like Baskin Robbins spoon. <laughs> Maybe let's bring up the screenshot so we'll figure out what it is. Yeah. It's uh, email marketing. Email marketing, maybe? Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, campaign kind of name. And <coughs> I got the little wussy wig editor there. And I add a campaign. Send some emails. Make a job. Send them off. Nice. Looks like it'll do some. Yeah, it's pretty Confirmed good stuff. emails. Yeah. Cool. Very yeah, nice. You want to send bulk mail? That looks like a really nice way to do it. You always want to be careful doing that from your web server. But uh, save some money and do it right there. Next one's called Backup Job, and it's by John Fish. Um, and this looks like it is a way to automate the creation of backups of your site's database. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, cool. So you could schedule a backup to run every couple days. Sure. Every night. That could be that could be helpful. I would offer a word of warning to our less technically savvy audience: running backups can be really intensive on your server. Yeah, it makes your whole hard drive run for a long time. We've seen sites crash because they're being backed up too often. So something to use judiciously. Uh, this next one's called Ring Share, and this is by Growth Group, and this actually is a uh, pretty neat. Uh, there's a live demo that's probably better than. Uh, looking at screenshots, but this is a way of making a bunch of nicely styled uh, social network sharing icons on your site. Uh, so when you actually roll over, you get Ooh. Ooh. some animation and some icons. Nice. And you can actually you know, tweet or stumble upon this. Right. And, uh, Skin motion background image, yeah. yeah. You can do a bunch of different options Ooh. to customize uh, it and kind of change how it reacts. So, so yeah. Pretty cool. Nice. Pretty handy. Nice. Uh, this next one is Pick Monkey, and this is another replacement for our old, uh, much loved picnic service, which went away. Sure. Um, and so this is uh, this is pretty sweet. I'm not sure if screenshots or other one will built-in image better, editing. Yeah. Yeah. It works the way you might expect. It's got some pretty cool. Uh, sure. Instagram e kind of style okay. uh, cross processing stuff. filters. That's cool nice. and free as well. Yeah, it's free. Nice. I can take this opportunity to share an internal note that we are actually working on a, a unified and uh, clarified built-in image editor for the next version of Concrete Five as well. It won't be as fancy as that one though. Uh, this next one is called Restore Block Types, and this is something you might want to use if you've, uh, you know, messed something up on your site, uh, deleted some core blocks, or installed some core blocks, and want to get them back. Um, 
This is probably something that you'd look for only if you are in a jam. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. But it's nice when you're in a jam, though. And it's also, that, you know, whatever block. it's probably not. It's nice for people who support Concrete 5 as well. Yeah. So we don't have to tell them, well, you're going to have to write this code. Yeah, because it's always someone who shouldn't be really messing around yeah, with HP. Yeah, because someone else decides to remove the auto nav block exactly. or something. And I can, we'll go down a little bit. So. Yeah. yeah, very cool. Thank you. This next one's called external link tracking, and uh, this lets you find out where your visitors go when they leave your site. Ooh, powerful SEO tool. Some icons added to your external links, and then you can actually, I guess, track this with Google Analytics. Oh, I assume this works just by through JavaScript, like sniffing your, sniffing your A tags on a page. I would imagine. Yeah, I believe so. Nice. It's handy. Cool. All right, now we've got VR doc, and this looks like it creates a fisheye doc-like menu. This sounds like a demo would probably be the best way to experience mm -hmm. it. Let's see. Let's experience the demo. Yeah. Hmm. So oh, I think you roll over that little bar. I see it doing oh, it. Oh, yeah. Just like my Mac. Yeah. Nice. Well, my Mac a long time ago. <laughs> but yeah, cool. Got a uh, looks like kind of a simple add-on here to display the name of your page alongside some other options. Um, let's jump back here while this loads up. Um, so if you're not quite ready to jump into uh, adding some code to your uh, you know your, your page type maybe or something like that to get the name of the page dynamically, you might use this. Is that your session on concrete code? Oh, here we here go. go. Okay, cool. Uh, looks like oh. Job, if you're, if you're watching, you might want there, buddy. Let's <laughs> see what he says. A simple handy add-on that includes a block for displaying the page name of the page currently being viewed. All right. Well, that would be handy. Yeah, we, we certainly built that type of thing for clients as well. Or yeah. just put the title at the top of the page or the content space somewhere. So you can see why you wouldn't have any screenshots, but they sure do help. Next one's from uh, Madeline. This is called Intense Debate Comments. Oh, I've always wanted to get involved in an intense debate. <laughs> if only there was some way to do that on the internet. I, I feel like the discourse is a little too silly. <laughs> 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 we need to mix it up a bit. <laughs> so this block just lets you uh, sort of embed a uh, intense debate thread around your page. And you cool. can specify the ID of your intense debate and just jump and that's right like a, an external comment service like discus right yeah Something totally like and i guess there's a demo here we can check out but i'm not going to get too deep into this <laughs> yeah. <Nice>. um <laughs> uh looks like this is another one uh another add-on that seeks to uh fix something that you may have broken this oh is this happens all the time yeah that yep. junkie because you can delete delete that job and how do I get the uh, search index <laughs> back? Yeah, search index back. I, I just deleted it for no reason. So now you can install this add-on and do it instead of <laughs> having amazing. to move files around. That's great yeah. to have. No, it's great. It's definitely nice for us. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's life easier. Thank yeah. you. This one's from here NT. It's called Custom Objects Demo, and this is a sort of a learning package. Just uh, I. I know there's a few other ones in the marketplace too that, that sort of explain how things work in Concrete 5 and how you might approach doing something. Cool. Um, nice. Yeah, it looks like it's set up to be expert, which seems that reasonable. Seems reasonable. Yeah. 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 So this is part of a, a larger how to that you can enjoy from here in TV. Nice. You should do that because learning is sweet. I approved these last two. Oh, yeah, buddy. So I kind of remember what they are. Uh, the Flex Job Scheduler is, uh, I believe, the previous backup job from John the Fish that we touched on a minute ago, where you could you could uh, schedule backups. That is sort of a, a simpler version of this, where um, this lets you actually um, take it's an add-on to the job system in Concrete Five that lets you schedule through your browser in a cron-like interface when to run certain jobs, um, so you can looking at that screenshot you can see they've got it set up to run every five minutes the first one um, and then going on, on and on and down and then you can also uh, specify the method by which that gets run whether it's um, it gets checked on every page load or if it gets injected into the footer through a JavaScript Ajax request that type of deal so this is really a way to uh, schedule jobs in a cron style in your con without leaving your concrete 
same site. And without true. having to know what Cron, what, is, yeah. what Cron is and how to use the URL that we give you in the job section to yeah. schedule the Cron That's job. That's a pretty cool interface. It's yeah. nice to have, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and it runs <laughs> through a job. As it, it can run through a, um, well, maybe a So, uh, but yeah, no, this is really nice and uh, has been in the PRB for a while because, as you can see, it's pretty complex. But John the Fish will provide good support. And uh, there you go. Nice. Cookie regulator yeah. sounds like a diet plan. <laughs> it does. It does. Um, this is another add on that will attempt to help sites comply with the EU oh, cookie law. The, the biscuit problem. The privacy biscuit problem. Privacy biscuits are in the way. Yeah, so as you might imagine, it it uh, shows this bar and then uh, writes a cookie and then will nag you again in a year. Basically. Nice, sweet. And it's free. And it's free. Uh, I think so. I think I think it's always free. Uh, yeah, hope, nice. it's, hope it's free, otherwise, sorry, dude. Uh, um, There's a free one. Cool! We did it! Yeah, that's good. That's great. a lot of stuff. All nice great choices, everyone. Greg. Joyce, certainly you've made the greatest of choices, and we miss you. But uh, <laughs> have a good time, and uh, yeah, good choices. Sweet. So today, we're going to have a very special How Would We Do That. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, we're going to open our creative process up a little bit and show you how it works here. And uh, in terms of background, I will start with saying that uh, we are frequently wrong on things. Uh, you know, we firmly believe that you can have bright people in a room that uh, are doing creative things, and it turns out that it's like the sixth or seventh version of something that they were thinking at that is the really right way to right. do it. Really and, uh, dials it in. That's how you do it. And uh, if you're just firmly committed to the, the first path that comes into your head, you are going to be firmly wrong and frustrated through life. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of how we work. So. Uh, in terms of history, uh, Concrete 5 started in 2003 as commercial software and uh, for a project we were building. And in those days, there was this thing called Flash that was super hot. <laughs> and uh, it had a lot of money so thrown at it. That's so I wish I had a screenshot. I know. I, it's probably a uh, backup. So. I actually was a Flash developer. And uh, a pretty decent one, I'll say so myself. And uh, we, we are under the... Uh, the firm belief that you could actually do HTML formatting in Flash. Because yeah. that's what we have. <laughs> and you, you could. You could-ish, yeah. yeah. You could put a bold tag around some text and it would make it boldy. Uh, and so we built um, our own little text editor in Flash and used it in Concrete CMS version 1. Well, uh, and moreover, I remember another reason for this, just for those who are thinking, why on earth would you do that? Yeah. It was probably the easiest way to make something approaching rich text editing that was truly cross-browser. Cross cross yeah. You didn't have all these fancy JavaScript libraries back in those days. Because IE could certainly do it. I had a built-in one. But, yeah. Yeah. But um, not so much in uh, Netscape yeah, Navigator. Yeah. Mozilla 08 yeah. could not uh, oh, run man. the content editable. So yeah, we built this thing in Flash. We figured, look, we'll build it. We'll only have to maintain one thing. It'll work everywhere. And who knows what's happening with the browsers and that brilliant of us. Uh, the other thing that we did is it was in page. It was. it was. There was no modal overlay. It would do just launch right there. So if you had a tiny little column on the side you wanted to do it, like, you get this tiny little editor with That's the right. two bars yeah. all stacked up and start typing like what the hell. Um, it was, you know, you'd lose a pixel on each side for the, the window and lose some more pixels for the goofy flash rounded thing. So it wasn't quite right. Yeah. But, you know, it was in context editing. Yeah. No one else was doing it at all. So we we're pretty proud of ourselves. And uh, the site launched, they were, you know, happy enough, and God, for all I know, they still have that thing, bless their hearts. Yeah. Uh, and we eventually swapped out, we kept it in page. Yeah, so we got to that, we launched it, it was like, that was great, and then I think we started our next project, Indy 911, we are using it, we're like, this sucks, yeah, this so is just horrible, and so uh, it was fine, they were all just us, and so I was like, yeah, yeah sorry dude, built it, it was cool, never mind. Yeah. And what we went, we went, we went to, to see, HTML, the, HTML area. HTML area, area, I completely forgot that. Thing. Yeah. Was, was it still? We, we it's HTML area. Yeah, and it's still mobile or still yeah, in still page. Still in page. Still in crazy page. toolbar. Now. Boom. Yeah. 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 And like, well, that's not flash at least. And then we're like, this thing sucks. <laughs> and so then the next version we were doing maybe for like Kettle Foods that or was, National Guard or FCK someone. FCK. Then we went to FCK, FCK editor, editor, which is probably one of the most brilliant product names ever because uh, as you use it, you realize this thing is FCK. And uh, burn, burn. <laughs> 
Was that still in page, or at that point did we come to the let's put it on top? You idea? know, I think we did the let's put it on top only in Concrete 5. That's where we ended I up. I think we did it in page it out. For yeah. the, so the whole time we were dealing with this thing, the toolbar would jank up the space, and like you kind of get a sense that you're editing the main content, but it was always a little off and it was annoying. But it was in page. But it was in page, yes. and, uh, and then when, when, and when we kind of stuck you in the basement and Concrete 5 came out of that, you switched over to Tiny MC, which was hot stuff at the time. Yep. And you came back and said, let's put this thing on top of the page to make it consistent with. People will be comfortable with it. It always is there. It makes you feel good. It'll be consistent across all our blocks. All the blocks will be in a All of them get this nice one. We were doing a lot of block editing actually in the page. Yeah. That like, the, sucked. I mean, yeah, the first, uh, the very first version of Concrete 5, they were all in page. Yeah. So we didn't have the time to differentiate between the different Yeah, and there wasn't that many settings anyway. Yeah, so, so like, like you'd do an auto nav and it would reload the page with all of the forms right there. stuff. Yeah. And, the, and as it grew, it was kind of like, oh my god, dude, yeah. how do I... So can't. then we, like, we switched to the, the overlay, but we kept the dial, or the content editing in page and previous versions of Concrete, and then in Concrete 5 we switched to only dial. That's right. Everything is dialogue, it's all consistent, isn't that great? All the developers were working on us were happy, like, oh, thank God. Uh, we did typography.css to try and carry the styles. Feel similar, the and, then, and our, our shtick was, well, look, you know, the page in edit mode shows you're pretty close to what you're going to get. Yeah. You still have preview. And you still get to go to that page to change it. It's still in yeah, context. It's still in context. It's, not it's what you see is what's, it's not wussy big, it's wussy mug or whatever. There's some <laughs> other wussy. Oh, uh, they. Uh, what you see is what you mean. Oh, that. Like yeah, that. that's. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was close enough. And, and, and I still yeah. believe that like the, the, the underlying promise is. If I see a typo on that page, I don't have to go dig through some yes. form in the figure back end to figure out where it is. It's it's yeah. I can just get in there and do it. So Absolutely. the idea of, of really like creating the Microsoft Word experience of I'm just reading and I just start typing and there's visually nothing moves is was a bar pretty high. Yeah. And at some point you have to be like, look, we're not gonna make that, so let's let's set the bar somewhere where we know we're gonna succeed at. So there's the background. And now let's start how would we do it? Yeah? Yeah. Let's do, do it. it. Do that. Right. All right. So I have not actually seen this. Yeah. Andy is on uh, vacation, and uh, Andy on vacation, you know, he only really kind of vacates a bit. Uh, I, I don't vacate that much. So he's been he's been working on a little something something, and yes. he told me last night, dude, I got some sweet stuff to show you. And I said, oh, I like seeing sweet stuff. Let's just do it in front of everybody. Yeah, let's do it. Um, I think I'm going to do the composer interface first. Okay. So, Whatever you want to show yeah, me, man. So what we're going to do is the very first thing that we're talking about for the next major version of Concrete 5 is a completely updated text editor. Oh. This is not, uh, this is no longer Tiny MCE. Nope. Oh. Um, yeah, we can tell what it is. Uh, this is based off of an editor called Redactor, yep. uh, which is uh, uh, really nice because, uh, you know, Tiny MCE is great, but it was first launched in a web that was so much worse than the web of today in terms of developer that. tools that uh, it had to build in a lot of con a lot of stuff that is not necessary. So this and editor it does make punky code. Yes, the problem it does. MC, it spits out stuff that you don't necessarily want. It does. And so what this this has been built from the ground up to support modern browsers. Um, and uh, Anyway, so this has been built from the ground up, ground up to uh, uh, support modern uh, web standards. Um, it is uh, so it, to that end, it's just one JavaScript file and one CSS file yep. that we are then minifying and adding to yep. our bundled JavaScript. And Much terms, easier to work with. Yeah, in terms of background redactor, it is two guys yep. that have a very similar philosophy to us about what's important in life. Uh, it is. Uh, that's licensed in, in several different ways, and uh, we ended up negotiating a, uh, a license that will work inside of Concrete 5 with them. So those of you that are worried about the business side of things, fear not. Uh, they are happy, we are happy, and, and the license that we have for this will last forever, and, uh, and it's all good. Yes, that is very good, very good news. Um, so it's much easier to work with, it's much easier to extend. Uh, the code that it generates, um, it, it, it clearly, it's not based on Bootstrap, but it's so similar that I was actually able to modify the code in pretty sustainable ways going forward. It's definitely forked, but it will be forked, and but we can maintain it much easier than a forked version of Tiny MCE. Yeah. Um, the uh, and the code that it generates from an editor standpoint is so much easier to work with. We can make it. 
we it is indistinguishable from the rest of the Concrete Five editing interface, right. which is always what was it's so hard to skin yeah. Tiny MCE. Well, um, we always would kind of shy away from doing it because when as soon as you do, oh yeah, if you want to update a Tiny MCE, now you have to redo all the skinning stuff. Yeah, pain in the butt. Yeah, and so uh, it can do HTML. Nice. The nice. code the code that it generates is generally much better than Tiny MCE. I haven't had as much like weird un uh, inconsistencies. Um, it is very extendable, and uh, and you can see here we've actually gotten we've we've gotten the uh, the actual built-in bootstrap styles. So this looks a little bit different than Our Redactor normally. It's all I ever um, use in Tiny MC anyway. Yeah, and if you you know use the built-in modals, they look exactly like they're using oh, jQuery nice. UI dialog because oh, just stuff. so much. We had to make some changes to their code to support this, but it's just so much easier to change. Nice. That, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty nice. It uses all the drop downs. It's got a table drop down that that we've got in there. Um, you know, insert tables and all all this kind of stuff. It's got color drop downs and uh, all all this stuff. And then you can see here we've actually added a Concrete Five plugin for yeah, sure. our Ooh. stuff. So we have link to page, insert image, insert link to file. Um, this stuff is somewhat, it's probably subject to change in terms of where it's going to be or whatever, but the underlying functionality is yeah. pretty set. Um, you know, so this brings up all there the stuff go. you know and love. The same stuff you saw on that bar across the top. The top yes, the, yeah, and it, so it all they, works. Uh, I noticed a couple of new things. Yes, there are a couple of new things in here. So, as you can see down here, we have page name, oh, username. Oh, These oh. are sort of proof of concepts for a new thing that we call uh, their uh, editor snippets, I editor think, snippets. is what they're called in the in the back end. Right. And what these are is a way to insert little placeholders. Worm fields. And exactly. Nice. And uh, the way that it does it is we're actually inserting a span that is not editable. So if we look at the code here, span class CMS content editor snippet content editable is false, and then it's got a little little handle here. So you could you could delete this if you were so inclined through the HTML editor, but if you come up here, you can't actually go in and make it read, you know, you can, it's a, it is an immutable field here. Right. So when you save this and you publish a page, um, I do, it will actually grab the, uh, uh, it will actually grab the name of the page. And since the name of the page is as, <laughs> I've got the name of my page over here. What a compelling story. I know, I know. <laughs> Clearly I rehearsed this demo <laughs> so much. Um, and uh, you get the idea. Yeah, yeah, you get the idea. So what that does is, uh, you, um, probably the most compelling part about that is that if you, um, you can see these are added to the drop down here. You can add these yourself. Those are extendable. Yes, they. Yeah. As we, a developer, you can make yes. your own. Yeah. We install two of them by default. Um, you can add them through a package. It's just a code file that gets um, with one function in it that will pass the. Um, it will basically just lets you specify what you want it to say, whatever it is it encountered. So, so you can grab things programmatically, yeah. current date, you grab things probably from, exactly. you know, I don't know, stacks or something. Yeah, and like whatever. Phone you, number. That yeah. You want. yeah. And whatever you want. Like, so when I insert the page name, when it renders, it gets the, the object of the current page and prints out the page name. Cool. Um, and since all this is within the content block, it will support caching, so you don't have to worry too much about uh, performance on it. We're still working out some of the kinks. Uh, in terms of caching, for example, username, uh, it will print out the current username, but since blocks are cached for all users, you might get some weirdness. Right, we're, right. we're still working with that, but uh, well, we are well, thinking about that stuff. Well, all that stuff is probably going to change a little bit as 5.7 gets closer to being a reality anyway. Exactly. We're about, we have separate conversations going on about caching, so yeah. we're about that. Exactly, exactly. So that is the new editor. Um, the, Looks great, generally, dude. the code that it makes is awesome. This is, uh, um, if you include the existing elements in your site, uh, if you include the existing elements to start an editor instance in your site or in your add-on, rather, uh, it will be used automatically, so you don't have to worry about that. If you actually have used custom elements or you've actually called Tiny MCE directly, um, that will you will have to modify your code to use this. We're still including Tiny MCE right now, yeah. Um, just well, yeah, for that, we'll have to figure yeah. out what the legacy plan is. That's yeah. Good. Thinking about launch, that's great. Yeah. Looks, looks great in Composer. Oh yeah, yeah, it, it, it is great, and uh, it looks even better when you are in the site. So remember when we talked about uh, when we were talking about all those challenges going through uh, in page and inline editing becoming in context editing, just sure. to, due to the nature of having a toolbar in there. Yeah. Um, 
I wanted to take another, given that we had this really awesome new editor, I thought, well, does it behoove us to take another stab Try again, man. at solving that problem? So if we click edit mode, you'll notice that this version, this little build that I have here looks mostly the same. Um, some of the, I've been messing around a little bit with oh, the, yeah, the outlines, the uh -huh. yeah. um, primarily because what I wanted was not having, to lose the pixel. yeah, not to lose, lose the pixel and to have it not move stuff around on the page yep. as much when you are in yep. edit mode. So this tries to draw an outline outside of the thing instead nice. of moving it around as much. Yeah. Um, and let's say I want to put this in edit mode. Uh oh. What? So what we do here is there's another plugin in Concrete 5 called Concrete 5 Inline, which is loaded when the block itself goes into edit mode. And what it does is it takes the redactor toolbar here and sticks it to the top of the screen. And it keeps this editable, but it moves this out. Because uh, this toolbar was so big, it wouldn't fit. It mess up the space. Yeah, it it's mess up the space. So you can type in here. You don't have to, this is not actually a text area, or a text area, this is an editable div um, in browsers that support that. So. It just moves the stuff down. You don't have to like, the page, like, gets, longer the page yeah. gets longer and longer. Fantastic. Uh, you don't have to worry, it doesn't inherit uh, typography.css any longer because it's getting the pages page. in yeah. line. Yeah. And uh, all this stuff Sweet. still works. And, but you're still within a block, so yep. you're not gonna be jumping, because that's the other problem we've had with this. By making like 100 edits to a page and yeah. then leave the page or something. No, you still get yeah, to totally. save. You're still you're in, save you're in a mode for a block. Nice. And you can tell that you, don't because become, stuff has faded out. out. And it, if dude. you save it, stuff fades back in gracefully. It works the way that it always did. Um, for smaller content like this, um, in the sidebar, works even, right. it works really nice. Right, you don't have the toolbar tool is always married to the top of the page so that you, we don't have that problem, you know. Um, if you're in stacks, for example, it works the same way. Um, so if I'm in the side nav stack and I'm like, yo, I want to add some stuff here. Uh, adding content works the same way as well. Start typing. Just start typing, save Pretty it, cool. puts the thing in there. Um, yeah, it's really great. It's uh, the way that you, uh, that it really should work in this day and age. No decisions were wrong, just these were. Things change. The, the timing is right. <coughs> Sweet, that's, dude. Uh, that's High five, that man. High five, woo, woo. Yeah. That's how it is. All right, let's go back to our former mode and we can do uh, questions and answers. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, yeah. Any questions? <coughs> oh, I'm sure we got Mueller. questions. No. Yeah. Sweet, <laughs> thank you. Goodbye. So we got uh, probably some, yep. you know start with questions that might be related to that, and then scroll yep. up and see if there's any other questions we can shave off in the, in the time that we have left. Go to dig up the cough drop for you. Sure, that's see if I can find it. So we're gonna give Matt a chance to uh, add up. Okay. Um, okay. So um, <coughs> here, NT asks, is uh, Tiny MC going away in the next version of Concrete? Um, Maybe that's been made obvious by what you guys are talking <coughs> yeah, about. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it so nothing breaks. But yeah. This is the goal for the next big version. Yeah. Right the uh, the Tiny MCE library will probably stick around for the next version. Um, I was testing on an add-on just to see if it worked with the new editor, and uh, it kept displaying Tiny MCE because that add-on was set to use Tiny MCE. But what's nice about that is. Uh, it was a good way to test that legacy code still works. So we're not taking that away, um, but the content block and the built-in stuff we'll be using the new method. Thank you. Uh, how about uh, options for pasting from Word uh, and stuff like that? Uh, is that gonna hang Yeah, up? that is a good question. Um, I have not tested this directly, but uh, looking at the bullet points for the redactor editor, one of the things is text uh, cleaning on paste. So they actually have, um, approached solving this problem and recognize it as one that is very important to solve. So I have not taken code from a Word doc and pasted it in there, but according to their feature points, it will be cleaned. You cool. did, there's no need to use the little click and stuff. Sweet. Okay. So there's a, some confusion about whether this is the content block or whether this is a composer or something like that. Um, all of those. This would replace the content block and be used every, everywhere that we use Tiny MCE. In the future, eventually, we would use this. We won't break anything. Yeah. But you know, you know how upgrading stuff goes with us. You, you 
jump on board. We'll try not to screw you too bad. <laughs> yeah, so what we were showing was the content block, first in Composer, just the same way it is today, and then secondly in Page. So this is just a new, this is just an upgrade to the content block, essentially. Yep. But the editor is also in place for uh, for everything else in the site, so um, works really nicely for uh, for attributes at the rich text editor level, mm -hmm. um, that kind of stuff. So yeah, we, we will probably we will we not probably we'll definitely be having conversations about well, okay, you know, if someone's built some add-on that really needs Tiny MC for some reason that we can't yeah. possibly fathom, how how do they continue to call Tiny MC instead of this? And it sounds like you're already down that path because we're still including Tiny, Tiny yeah. MC in Python, so yeah. Uh, that is something we will worry about. Yes. I think most of these have already been answered in here. Sweet. Is, so a lot, of the, a lot of questions are posted as the demo was happening. So if I've, if I've, if I've missed something that's, that's still outstanding for you, please repost it to the chat. We'll, I saw a question that I think we could answer um, that's uh, probably based on the image editor discussion we were having. The, uh, someone asked if uh, there will be changes to the composer image cropper. Yes. <coughs> Well, we have three different image editors and Tiny Table Concrete 5 today. It's a complete mess. And, yep. uh, Avatar, Composer, um, the built-in file manager one. It's crazy. And uh, the two of those are in Flash. Yeah, two of those are in Flash and they make weird artifacts. The other one's in JavaScript, I think, that you spent yeah, about yeah. You know, maybe 12 hours working on it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. None of it's awesome. Uh, Corbin has been churning away on um, a, a nice, really extendable uh, image editing with, uh, with plugins for different things you might do on the right uh, yeah. framework that we can use for all of these. In my mind, uh, the key features are you've got to be able to pass the croppable size. Yeah. As, as someone who works for agencies, you, you need to be able to tell your client, uh, yeah, just hit edit on this and know that that, that header image is always going to be 126 pixels wide and 768 pixels, uh, or vice versa. Uh, this this footprint and move it around inside of that, uh, and that is something that none of the other existing image editors that we have found do. Yeah. So um, after our experiences with um, Picnic, which also didn't really do that, but uh, kind of depending on something that just vanished uh, as a third-party service. Yeah. I don't um, want to do that. I don't want to do that. I mean, I understand why they did that. No hard feelings. I, I, mean, I got blocked by Google and they said vanish it too. I guess what you're going to do. Yeah. But. Um, you know that sucks. So um, we're just wary of having to deal with uh, with a tool that doesn't do what we need to do, and we didn't write. So um, you, many of you probably know Corbin, and he's quite bright. And uh, Andy has architected how we want it to work, and I've seen some prototypes of it starting to work. Right. And uh, that will also be part of five seven, and will be super sexy. And one solution to rule them all. Sweet. Anything else? Yeah, we got some questions about general stuff. Do you guys want to take some of those? Yeah, well, we got like about five, ten minutes before I think Andy completely runs out of steam here. <laughs> I've run out of cough drops. Um, yeah, okay, it looks like we have a question from Genovo. Um, a uh, multilingual site using internationalization. Um, they have a products page, only in English, with many sub pages, and they want to alias that page in each language directory. Uh, I guess there's a problem happening when it comes to the AutoNav. Uh, the drop down for the sub pages against that alias does not show. Um, hmm, it sounds like, yeah, there's looking for a solution that doesn't involve copying products into each language directory. So, guess uh, in this could I case. Ask, yeah. Could we ask why? Because I want to copy products over and over and over. No. Oh. Use the alias, but aliases are pointy. Yeah, I mean, aren't, you, aren't they going to be in different languages? The, the pages, that is? Sounds like he doesn't want the products in different languages. Yeah, it was they wouldn't, different, different, they wouldn't like, be. Different about us languages, but he just wants to kind of like alias the product correct or underneath it or something. Nope. Totally. That wasn't really a yes or no question. <laughs> uh, so... Just English. Other pages are in other languages. Oh. So he wants the products to stay in English. Okay. He just wants other languages for, you know, why shop with us and whatnot. Uh, I don't think alias is going to work. No. This is my short answer. Is alias is cool, but it really just basically redirects you over to another spot. Um, yeah. You shouldn't make things under aliases. No, you can't. Um, it will show... 
No, I don't, I don't think that'll work. It'll show the, the sibling pages on, a, on an alias in the particular section of the tree that you're in, but it won't. Um, Aliases are leaves on the tree. Yeah. No more branches underneath. Yeah. Uh, so product pages underneath an alias wouldn't work. So I would just have your core, core e yeah, product tree here and your, uh, your other languages here and you just kind of link over there when you need to. Yeah. I mean, in the auto now, I mean, you could certainly, you could also create a custom template. I mean, this is ugly, but make a custom auto nav template to check the particular spot on if if the particular page it's rendering is the product page grab the the children from a from the other section of the site but yeah I yeah. don't know no wish I had a better one on that yeah. there you go hopefully that helps yeah do not worry don't keep beating your head against the alias thing it is not designed to do what you are doing all right, we got a question from Hostco, um, and uh, let's see if we can find an answer or something helpful to this. They have an APC issue. Um, they have APC turned on and in edit mode because of the user cache entries, we believe there is a problem. Um, let's see, users constantly get the message that admin is already admin the page. Sounds um, like the one that was around. around. Uh, <coughs> is there a way to disable APC or the user cache entries while in edit mode? No, I mean, it sounds like that would be treating the symptom rather than the underlying problem. Um, we haven't, we've used APC on our own sites and have not had that happen. Um, I'm wondering what, but this sounds a lot like the problem. With the domain stuff, if you, are you, are you um, running a lot of sites on this server or doing like multiple domains through the domain mapper or some other type of solution? So it's possible that APC is juggling confusing, confusing cookie session type stuff because yeah. it doesn't do a great job of that. Or, yeah, attempting to uh, run the same uh, grab the same cache entries from multiple sites because it's confused as to which site it's looking at. Even even <coughs> even uh, if you're maybe logging in as www.sitename.com versus yeah. just sitename.com, you can run into that kind of problem where um, it's, you're path logged in. Yes. Yeah. So explore that and <laughs> just for example, uh, it's funny, it's hard to articulate why I think this is the problem, but uh, the way that APC caching works um, on, a, on a server for, in Concrete 5 is they all have their own different keys, so page ID 1, etc. But if you're running APC on one box with multiple uh, sites on it, all those keys are shared, so you might get problems. And the way that we get around that is we define something called cache ID, um, which attempts to basically prepend itself to all the cache entries based on the base URL of the site so that all the cache entries which are shared are unique across different base URLs. But if you're using the domain mapper or something like that, that constant is probably all is probably going to be the same even though you've got different sites that you're editing so, or different domain map map domains that you're editing. So I don't know if that's something you're you're doing, but um, that would be a problem. I would look into that. Um, Shoo! What else you got? Okay, uh, looks like uh, we got some. We got some stuff. We got some stuff. Um, there's a leader's thread from John the Fish. I'm not sure if there's an easy answer for that we can go into on this. Uh, let's see, if we logged in on here. I'm gonna read it. Um, yeah, maybe we'll get back to that later. I don't know what you guys want to do. Uh, um, sure. Okay. Any ideas on this? Um, looks like this was asked in IRC. Um, let's see, jump over here. Some things. Oh, an anchor link is added to a block on the site. Change that block in there. Edit mode and anchor link. Yeah. You know, you know that is what it is. Uh, yeah, the important thing, they're adding anchor links, and it's like you gotta add the anchors and then exit edit mode before the anchors show up in Tiny MCE's drop down list. You know, since we just showed that we're dumping tiny MCE in between to a new editor, I think it's safe to assume we don't care. <laughs> I'm sorry if that wasn't the answer you were looking for. 
That's the answer you're getting. Is that the, the best way to mark resolve on a bug? It's like, well, the whole thing's going away anyway. Resolve. <laughs> Uh, like, yeah, that yeah. functionality is going away entirely. Yeah, the only way, it supports yeah, anchor links. The only way you can solve that is like magically somehow reload the anchor links within tiny MCE from, yeah. a from the concrete five dispatcher on in edit. Like, do all or that. like, uh, yeah, set up a you know it, it, using this editor. One thing that is nice that makes it so much nicer is there's no more iframes for things like the modal dialogues or whatever. So they're all the same document on the page. So in theory, if we wanted to extend the uh, the new editor to support something like this, you could add the anchor link, and any time that gets that happens, and perhaps this actually works in the editor already, it could um, trigger an update on the page to re-grab all anchor links, and you're not juggling two different uh, document object model uh, things to make that work. So um, we will be able to approach solving those problems in a much more graceful fashion going forward. Cool. All right. Well, Andy's out of water and it was last cough drop, and uh, I think so it's going to get dicey here. We're all running soon. out of steam, so that was totally random. And uh, I, I hope you enjoyed the new editor, and uh, we're excited about it, and, and looking forward to forging ahead. So, see you next week, I think. Well, no, next week's Thanksgiving. Now, we'll see you in a week or two. Yeah. Fridays at 10 a.m. Pacific time.